Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of PropTech Carpool with Soho. In this video, I interview Josh Saliba, licensee in charge at Soames Real Estate in Thornley. Josh wakes up at 2.45 a.m. Even Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, doesn't get up that early. Josh has amazing work ethic and self-discipline. Stay tuned for more. So Josh, what made you get into real estate? Yeah, f funny story. So um, left school, I had like, like four or five jobs before I actually got into real estate. Hairdressing was one of them. So, um, And my dad actually just said, found a job for me in real estate with a family friend. I was quite young, a little bit off the rails, doing the whole partying, drinking thing. And then, um, yeah, he sort of pulled me in and said, you're going to go get a job in real estate. And I was like, oh, whatever was going to keep him happy. I was working with him at the time. Yep. And he's like, here you go, here's a job. And I started in leasing, did that uh, for about two or three years, did property management for about a month, absolutely hated it. Yep. And then, um, yeah, went, in, went into sales as an assistant to the principal, and that was out in Parramatta Way. And yep. then um, since moved back to Thornley down at Soames and been with them for, I think it's going in about four, four and a half years now. Right. You're, you, you, you must have a, a couple of mentors along the way. Yeah. Who, who are they? Or, I mean, you know, you don't have to name them, but yeah. um, I guess what do, you, what do you pick up from, from guys like that? Yeah, of course. Um, there's definitely been a few. So, Josh Vegan's been... Oh, I, there's not a lot I can say about him. He's actually the reason why I am who I am, not just as a real estate agent, obviously as a person as well. Yeah. Really, really, um, really smart, really humble, really cool guy. I devote everything that I've done to him and thank him for everything because, you know, in the early days, I was a little bit lost with, with which way I was going and um, found him and he just, you know, changed the whole game for me. And then off the back of him, Alexander Phillips has been... Yep. One of the other people I went to, uh, um, I think it was List Sell Negotiate, which is one of Josh Vegan and Damien Cooley's events um, back in my early days. And I saw Alexander Phillips talk and he's like, um, I, I think he made like five or 600 calls a week. And at that time I was like, oh, I'll probably make like 20 calls a week. And yep. I thought I was like really, really busy. <laughs> So that day I got back to the office and made sure I made 100. Um, so yeah, look, I think I've, I've picked up those two guys. What I've learned from them, uh, you got to build a team. Yep. You need a team. If you don't have a team, there's no, well, there is point being in real estate, but I don't think you can just scale. You can just, you just keep doing the, the same numbers in my opinion. I don't think the, the service standard increases if you don't have a team. Yeah. Best advice and worst advice you've ever had in life. Not, not, not so much targeted to, to real estate. I mean, it might be yeah. about real estate, but yep. yeah. So best advice is to outwork everyone. Okay. Yeah, that's it's, very good. It's pretty simple. Just wake up before everyone else and yep. stay back. Uh, yeah, and the worst advice is um, uh, sleep when you're dead. Okay. So I know that they, there's two things sort of contradict themselves, but I think that you need to work very hard, yep. but you also need to um, take some time out. You need to have a focus on your health, focus on your family, um, but also focus very hard on your work. And um, in the early days, I went hell for leather at the work thing, and yeah. I uh, never let the health thing go by wayside because that's what I generally enjoy, but the family stuff went by the wayside. So yep. I think that find that balance, it will take time. Um, Make sure you holiday as well. Yep. Yeah. What are you What are you looking for in a, in a team? What What kind of qualities uh, mm. are you looking for, for in terms of when you when you're about to hire someone? Mm, mm, good question. Um, for me, I like structure. Mm -hmm. I, love, I need structure. If I don't have structure within my team, yep. then that just doesn't work for me. So I'm very, very heavily uh, geared around structure and people that have structure. Mm -hmm. What I have learned is that people will never be maybe as structured as you or maybe as structured as me. Mm -hmm. So I think you've just got to find that balance. Uh, but definitely structure is probably the most important thing. And I think second to that is someone that's approachable. Yeah. yeah. Two of the guys that I've got on, really, really nice kids, just, just good good people big hearts and just want to do want to do well for people and i think me and my clients see that what are you thinking at, a, at an auction i mean i'm sure you guys do a couple auction you know you got the the buyer the vendor you're kind of in the middle um what, what what's going through your mind at the on, on auction day anyway i'm really comfortable on auction days i never used to be i never used to be uh what i found is that if you build a really really good relationship with the vendor or the vendors throughout the selling process 
and you have that meeting just before the auction day, whether it be a day or two before, yep. and you can look them in the eye and say, look, this is what's going to happen because you've done the follow-up, you've got a relationship with the buyers, you've been diligent. On auction day, I'm, I'm usually pretty calm and, and pretty cool, but I guess I've done it obviously a few times before, so it's um, making things a little bit easier. Yep. Uh, the market has obviously changed, so those conversations are becoming a little bit harder, yep. and I think that um, a lot of agents are avoiding having those conversations, but with me, I know that regardless of the relationship, I just have to be honest with people and say, look, this is where we're at, this is where I think it's gonna go, and this is what I think you need to do. Yeah, what's your morning ritual? What do you get up and do? What, how does your first, I don't know, well, first 15 minutes of the office, how does that look? But, you know, when, when you wake up, how does that look as well? Yeah, this will, be inter- this will get some interesting feedback. Um, so I'm up at 2.50, that's a.m. in the morning. Uh, so I'll have some brekkie and then I'll meditate. Yep. So I meditate for about 10 or 15 minutes every single morning. I typically get to the gym uh, maybe about 3.45. Wow. Yep, yep. So I'll train for about an hour, hour and a half, and then shower and get to work. Uh, usually at work at right, about 6. Yep. yep, just after six, I have a bite to eat, um, do some of the admin stuff that maybe the overflow of the boys that, that can't do it in the office yeah. and just sort of catch up in general general other things. And then first call session goes out at eight o'clock. Okay. Yep, and then do um, pretty much call sessions all day. Yep. Appointments um, in the after about 11 or 11.30. So I'll try and get the three call sessions out in the morning and then do appointments after that and typically leave the office um, usually about sort of 6.30 or so. Yeah. Where do you think the market's going for, for Thornley anyway? Yeah, um, <laughs> we've had some interesting changes. We've probably seen property prices adjust maybe between 5 and 8% yep. since the start of the year. Wow, it's a quite a big, big jump. Definitely, yeah. A lot more stock coming onto the market. That's probably shifting things a lot. What's going to happen moving forward? I think we'll see a similar trend over the next maybe two, three, four months. Yep. Potentially even until the end of the year. And I think that we'll probably start to see it stabilize maybe towards next year mm-hmm. i don't think we've seen any, any more dramatic changes i feel like we've seen a lot of the price correction uh but there's still a lot of uh, buyers that are very reluctant to do anything because their fear is that they're going to buy at the peak of the market yep. or they're going to buy when the property if the property prices keep dropping and they're going to be caught out so hey guys thanks for watching another episode of pop tech carpool for more quality content please subscribe you can also check us out on facebook in the links in the description box below.